Hello Westminster, it's good to greet you on a beautiful Wednesday. I want to thank you to so many of you who have let us know that you are praying for our session last night as we met to discuss when we might be meeting again uh, to worship together in person. Last night, uh, our session decided to name June 7th as the date that we will meet again for worship together. So we will continue our live online only services through the month of May, and we'll plan to meet again on June 7th. You know, as we discuss these things, uh, I think of Acts 15, where elders met in Jerusalem uh, to discuss a, a difficult question, and, and God's Word says that after much debate and discussion, uh, the, the leaders of the church came to a wise and godly conclusion. And I think this description aptly fits our session meeting as well. There was certainly much heartfelt uh, debate, uh, exchange of differing viewpoints as we sought to come to a, a wise and God-honoring conclusion. We debated such things as being faithful to God's word, uh, both in its call to worship together as well as in its call to care for one another and, and honor life. We discussed our community and, and how we could be both a light and a witness to our community, but also demonstrate our care and concern for our community, wanting to walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, as Colossians says. And we discussed how to make this a, a God-honoring decision and not one that would jump into a political fray. And so as we discussed many different things uh, seeking to honor the Lord, uh, we look forward to meeting again on June 7th. As we think about meeting together on June 7th, one of the things I think it's important for us to recognize is that this won't be a return to normal. Uh, this worship service on, on Sunday, June 7th, will not be in the same patterns and rhythms that we're used to. To begin, we would really encourage those who are in a high-risk category, those who are 65 and older, to continue live streaming from home. While we believe that we can mitigate much risk through our plans, and I've attached a document that lays out what this Sunday on June 7th will look like, we can't eliminate all risk, and we would encourage those who are at high risk to, to consider not returning with us right away. Also, Session feels very strongly that anyone who attends worship on June 7th should wear a mask. And we would ask if, if you're not willing to wear a mask that you stay home and worship from home. Now, some would say, well, this is debated in the medical community. Are masks really that effective? And they're an annoyance. But Session feels strongly for three reasons. First of all, this is a way for us to love one another. There will be those who feel safe and comfortable worshiping with us, with everyone wearing masks, who would be concerned about the risk if there are many who don't wear masks. And this is just a way for us to make a small sacrifice to love and enable others to worship with us. But secondly, it's also a strong and tangible witness to our community. Right now, the willingness to wear a mask or not is a significant and tangible sign to our community of whether we care about them and their health or whether we're just seeking to do what we want and exercise our rights. And thirdly, just scientifically, coming together indoors into a sanctuary to sing loudly and boisterously together is probably the best way to spread a disease that is an airborne disease uh, spread through water droplets. And so we believe that's just a wise and prudent thing to wear a mask as we come together again on June 7th. I would also just uh, encourage us, on June 7th, it's going to be just a worship service. We won't be meeting for Sunday school or offer nurseries. But even though we will face the, the joy of being back together again, I think it's likely that we'll also face a, a lament as things, even our worship, is not the same as what we remember it being. But both the joy and the lament will best be done together as we encourage one another and strengthen one another through this time. Finally, before I close, two things I want to communicate to you. First of all, we could really use your help in order to make our June 7th worship service go smoothly. I've attached a survey monkey here with a few questions. First, asking whether you would intend to join us uh, in person for worship so we can get a feel for, for how many people would come. We're very willing to offer more than two services if that would allow more people to, to attend. And then we also, if we do uh, offer a third service, would like to know when that could best be offered, in the afternoon or, or an evening. And so if you'd fill out this Survey Monkey survey and get this back to us in a short time, this will greatly help us as we seek to make wise plans for June 7th. Finally, this coming Sunday, we're going to be back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I was struck, in light of last night's session meeting, by the first verses we're going to cover, where Paul says, But since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face because we wanted to come to you. What a great statement of the way we feel. 
We've been torn away from you in person for a short time, but our great and eager desire is to be with you in person again, and we look forward to doing that on June 7th.